Hi, it's Morgan and Jeremiah. We are really excited about the launch of a brand new e-course called The Family Altar. Hey, we are so excited. If you're on the verge of divorce, maybe you like want to knock your head against the wall because your kids are giving you problems. Maybe you're just like fighting about finances or you know what? I know there are people out there. Things are okay, but you know they can be better. We want to encourage you to, to an in-depth, real, raw conversation, teaching from Morgan. I'm going to get after it as well. Think about it. Pray about it. Join us right now on the launch of this new e-course, The Family Altar. want to hear where you're from and please let us know and we want to know um, if you're married or single and then how many kids that you have so as everybody's logging back on um, if you want to let us know uh, where you're from and then if you're single and or married or how many kids that you have uh, we'd love to find that out on the call so We'll just give 30 seconds for that and um, go ahead and let us know city, state, or country. We had some folks contact us tonight from Ireland uh, trying to stay up for the call. Morgan and I went on a date night tonight and we actually just got back and uh, just took some time to connect and hang out and calendar plan. Okay, awesome. So we've got um, Ohio, Indiana, Wyoming, Florida. We've got married, single, no kids. Um, Atlanta, um, Indiana. Uh, we've got people from North Carolina, Washington. Awesome. So we've got probably a good variety um, of all sorts of folks on the call tonight. So that's awesome. Well, Morgan and I have been carrying a, a serious burden from the Lord for a long time uh, concerning uh, building a family altar. Uh, my new book uh, called The Altar just came out. Most of you probably know that. But the number one question that we get over the years is, you know, people see us do ministry or they follow us online, but it's always about marriage and family. And so recently we went into our studio uh, here in, in uh, the Charlotte region and Morgan and I um, have filmed um, a, a big media project. And kind of what that looked like was Morgan went into the studio and she filmed uh, three sessions and directly spoke to moms and wives. Um, I went into the studio and I filmed some sessions for uh, husbands, fathers and men. Um, and then we did some conversations together um, just talking about marriage and family and struggles and trials and all of those kinds of things. And so um, during the call tonight, after the call tonight, um, you're going to see that media project launched. So we're here tonight to share a little bit of our stories, to give you some keys that we've learned along the way. But if you're watching tonight and you just want more in depth, all of that kind of stuff, we want to encourage you uh, just to get the media project. Uh, you can grab it, download it, uh, keep it forever kind of thing just to have with you. So that's kind of what we've been doing behind the scenes, trying to steward the burden. But we're so glad that you're here tonight. Um, we want to go ahead um, and just dive in and uh, let, let's just pray. Father, thank you for those uh, watching tonight, Lord, who have taken time out of their schedule. Lord, we lift up the singles, the divorced, Lord, the married couples. Lord, we, we want to see healthy marriage and family. We want to win where it matters the most. And so, Lord, we just put anything else that we're doing on the table, work, finances, ministry, opportunities. And, Lord, we just push all of that to the side and just ask, Lord, would you come and bring healing and restoration and reconciliation and clarity uh, to marriages, families, and singles tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So um, Morgan and I are coming up on 12 years of being married. Um, we met in college at Southeastern University down in Lakeland. Honey, how many kids do we have? Four. Four. Three girls, one boy, 
10. Our oldest is a girl. Then we have an eight-year-old boy, a five-year-old girl, and a three-year-old Hadassah, little girl. So obviously, as most of you know, that have smaller kids, that's a lot. Um, we think we have a lot. And then you meet people with eight kids, 10, 12, you know, <laughs> all, all of those kinds of yep. things. And, you know, obviously there there is a lot. But, you know, our dynamic at home, you know, small kids, 10, 8, 5 and 3, um, you know, kind of going back when we graduated college, um, we felt the call to church plant. And so our journey started um, in our living room, no money, um, you know, no people. And we began like a very humbling journey, um, you know, just just kids, no denominational backing, all of that stuff. So we kind of our journey um, starting out married was just very broke, very poor, uh, fasting and praying, not because you really wanted to, but Sometimes you didn't know where food was going to come from, that kind of thing. A lot of humble beginnings. Um, but as we planted the church and, you know, just pioneered over the years, our personal story, I realized as a pastor that Morgan had a gift on her life that didn't fit into the four walls of a church. And so um, Morgan and I began to converse and have um, a conversation about ministry and business and family. And so I want to kind of let Morgan share a little bit about, you know, just kind of your journey, our story. Yeah. Um, well, I was super thankful that Jeremiah has always kind of given me freedom to be me. And, you know, the pastor's wives kind of have a stereotype. And I was kind of set on breaking that and being who God wanted me to be. And so I loved the women's ministry that we were able to do and grow organically. We did a mom's ministry, first started out of a burden. Um, I just have a huge burden for those who are bound in human trafficking. And I was a stay at home mom. I couldn't really do a whole lot, but I just started a 5K. You know, I could do something once a year to raise money and support those who are ending human trafficking. And then from there, um, we were married seven years at that point or something. Um, I had a really close friend who her life radically changed from health supplements. I watched it, felt drawn to it, decided to take them for myself secretly for a long time. And then I realized the Lord was calling me to do that too. And I talked to Jeremiah. I said, I really don't feel like I'm good at sales. I'm not salesy. I don't know how this fits in with the ministry, but I feel called to it. And he felt like, go for it. I feel like this is the Lord. So I said, if it's for nothing else other than to lay down my pride, I'm going to do it. I'm going to give God my yes, just post once a day, see where this thing goes. And if a year later it goes nowhere, that's fine. And so from there, after a year was up, I was making pretty good money. And I had realized God had birthed the desire inside of me to have a marketplace ministry, be able to minister to tons of women. Um, because when we're struggling in our health, that's a missing piece. And so I was able to do something with my kids at home, right? Still be the stay at home mama, but feel like I had a purpose that God had put inside of me and do that there. And I just, I, I want to interject, you know, th this was such a, a massive paradigm shift. Um, I don't know how many of you are pastors or, or in full-time ministry, but like the whole concept of, you know, me as a pastor at the time, being full time in ministry, a growing church, all that that involves. And then Morgan coming and saying, hey, I feel a calling outside of the church. Um, I remember, you know, for me, like, you know, my parents pastored. My mom was the church secretary. I mean, we we ate, breathed and slept church. So Morgan coming, I remember, I remember praying about it and just saying, okay, Lord, if this is really what you want, um, then I say yes. And so I, I remember, you know, going and getting Morgan a computer and, you know, just trying to get behind her. And again, I, I just, it's our story, right? So, you know, I just want to be true to our story. I, I've met so many couples in ministry over the years. You guys know I travel all over the United States, all over, all over the world. And I, I, I just, I'm overwhelmed at how many couples in ministry that I've ran into that are sort of caught in that paradigm of 
poor and in the ministry. And this is all that God has for us. And some of them have a gifting and a call outside of the four walls of the church. And if our story could be an encouragement, I know it could be a small group of people. We just want to, you know, encourage um, anyone who, who finds themselves pastoring in ministry that maybe has a mindset um, that we had. We were taught, we were trained in Bible college, you know, that kind of thing. Maybe our story could be a, a blessing um, to some of you and just kind of kind of that shift. So. Did you want to keep going? Or? Yeah, no, it was good. I think Jeremiah did a good job. Like when I married him, I didn't marry the ministry. And so he's been help. He's been super helpful to help me steward what God's placed inside of me. But we also do everything together. So he doesn't do the business with me, but he's very much involved supporting me. Like you said, he got me a computer, but he's my biggest cheerleader and supporter. And, you know, we talk and make decisions together, with it, which I think is super important. And of course, I'm there cheering him on and all of his things too. So it's, we have different callings, but we do them together and it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And so, you know, as, as Morgan, God began to bless her and her business, you know, my, my, um, you know, I had a, a massive encounter with the Lord where, you know, after we were, you know, pioneering and pastoring, you know, we had purchased, uh, a large facility and and really began to get stability. I felt the Lord calling me begin to begin to focus more on traveling and more on training and equipping in schools. And so, you know, I went to our elders at the church and said, I feel like because my focus is becoming more on travel and more on training, I'm going to give up my salary at the church, you know, which is something that we relied on all those years and just trust the Lord for his provision. And literally that same month that we did that after having something consistent after some years, Morgan's business, God began to really pour out his blessing on it. And we, we, our story, we, we see the providence, the, the, the hand of the Lord knowing our different seasons that he, he was, you know, we pioneered, we pastored, we were handing things off and I was getting more of a global vision and a burden. And if we hadn't responded to the Lord several years earlier and began to shift some things in our personal life and our marriage and family, we would have never been able to step into the call um, that God really has for our family. So, um, yeah, it's so good. Uh, the it, how God showed up, and He's given us little, you know, just winks as we've gone along in the journey. But as soon as He stepped down from pastoring, my salary was exactly what He was making, and so we're like, okay, God, You knew when I felt the nudge in 2017 when He stepped down in 2019. I was going to be able to have that income so we could travel and do the work of the Lord. So it was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and basically from there, we end up, um, you know, fully handing over our church down in Florida and moved up to North Carolina in 2020, where God has called us to, to birth a movement. And so our, our story is literally full of church planning uh, staff management, business, um, you know, it's, we're, we've been going 24 seven, you know, all of those things. So again, a lot of the questions that people ask us is like, how are you so involved in ministry? How are you so involved in, in, in business? How are you traveling? How are you, you know, I, you know, I've written 12 books to date. I mean, there's just a lot that we're doing I think a lot of people are are trying to figure out, I guess, some of the, the nuts and bolts behind it. So um, I hope that us just sharing, you know, 15 minutes, just really brief of our story kind of gives you um, a, a little a little bit of uh, who we are. Um, again, kind of a, a mixture, church planning, um, conferences, business, small fam, all of those things like that. We've pioneered, we've had success, God's blessed us, but we've, we've had to recognize a shift, right? We've had to, had to be intentional about taking steps um, to, you know, help us on our journey. So 
Um, we wanted to talk about a couple of keys for us personally um, that we feel could be a blessing uh, to you, uh, whether you're single or whether you're married. And the first thing that we wanted to talk about was finances. Uh, I obviously know we're kind of just go ahead and, and talking about it. You know, it's one of the number one reasons people divorce. They fight over money and that kind of thing. And so Morgan and I wanted to share a little bit about our thoughts on finances and marriage and, and how that works. And again, we're just here to share our story. We're not perfect. Um, the Lord's grace has been so mightily upon us for, for all of these years. But um, honey, talk to them a little bit, you know, so, so we get married and what, what's, what's something the Lord began to talk to you about? Yeah. So a lot of different conversations we had when we were dating, I remember even Jeremiah asking me questions like, how much money do you give to missions? I'm like, well, we're college kids. I like to give to missions, you know, we're going there. But as we got married, I, after we got married, I remember praying and asking the Lord just specific things about what is this marriage supposed to look like and what was he saying? And I remember one thing that the Lord dealt with me. I can't even remember if we were engaged or if we were married, but was that when we were doing our finances together, I was to let Jeremiah totally do that and hand it over to him, which to some of you guys that might be like, duh, he's the head of the house, right? He's the man. But for us, I was the more organized, like I would have had an Excel spreadsheet. I'm the math brain. He's the English major, right? And so it didn't really make sense in the natural, but for a long time in our marriage, our finances didn't make sense. But as we were faithful to the Lord, to steward what he gave us, he always provided. We never were in lack. And so even to this day, I barely look at the bank account. I just trust Jeremiah as he's putting money in and we're going out. We just do that and we work together, but he completely kind of keeps an eye on that. And then um, we've always worked and lived within our means. Yeah. You know, something that that is huge for us from day one um, is, you know, again, just us personally, you know, however that you handle things. Um, we haven't done credit cards, um, you know, we, I guess 12 years now. Um, you know, we live within our means. If, if you don't if you don't if you can't afford it, you don't buy it. You wait. Um, I don't, you know, people think we're crazy. I don't know that we've ever had a fight about finances. Um, it's just, it's just something we've just given to the Lord. And again, like I mentioned, we, we have had seasons early on where, where thing, things were very, very um, few and far between. And then we've had seasons where the Lord has blessed us, but I just, you know, want to encourage folks. I, you know, I did, you know, we mentioned, we pastored, I counseled couples for, for over 10 years, marriages, families. And I was always stunned at, at, at especially Americans, our need to have more. Um, we sacrifice peace in our homes um, the unity of the Holy Spirit, because we we just, you know, you watch TV, you got to have this and you got to have that. And it can just be a huge dead weight um, in people's lives from really pursuing what God has for them. And so when it comes to finances, we strongly exhort you to live within your means. And then as Morgan mentioned, I mean, we were just in the dating process and I was asking her, how did she feel about giving to missions? Um, because Morgan and I, um, most people will tell you that know us, we're some of the most generous people that they've ever been around. Um, I just believe in kingdom giving and finances. Um, we are constantly looking for ways that we can give financially to God's kingdom. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars every year um, that we sow um, into missions and and pioneers and single moms. And it just, we love to pour out, um, but you have to trust the Lord in that. So um, we highly encourage you, get out of debt, um, live within your means, uh, fight the American. You got to have bigger, you got to have more. And then I we encourage you, if God is blessing you, 
Um, if, if God's favor is upon you, look for ways that you can sow um, into the kingdom of God. And, you know, some people, oh, you know, what about a, a, a mortgage on a house? You know, for us in particular, like a mortgage on a house is, is you know, not something that I consider like debt per se. Obviously, I mean, I don't know anybody that has four or five hundred thousand dollars cash just to buy a house. But again, I, I'm talking about all of those excess things that we buy that we really don't need. And so just want to in encourage you live within your means, be a kingdom giver, um, get we get crazy joy um, out of being a blessing to the kingdom of God. So we really encourage you about that. Um, also, in, in the comments section, we're going to continue to talk. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about is communication. Um, if you have questions, um, you can go ahead and put them in the comments section. Um, we cannot promise to answer them all because we have no idea if we're getting ready to get a couple hundred questions. <laughs> and as I mentioned on the call, um, you're going to see a link um, that we posted there on the call. Um, we filmed a, a, a tremendous media project. I'll, I'll just post it again if you want to take a look at it. But we went into our studio here and filmed a day's worth of media content for you, really getting down into the nitty gritty. Uh, I'm going to broadcast it right now so you can just click on the link. But if you've got questions, comments, those kinds of things, you can just uh, comment in the, the, the chat section and uh, we'll try to get to you. So communication. OK, so all of us men know that we usually have conversations in our heads that we actually never had with our wives. And so, you know, for me, because I communicate for a living, um, our scenario is a little bit different. I, I tend to verbally process uh, to the point that it's, uh, you know, can be kind of, you know, too much, if you will. Um, but for us, like I'll give you an example. Tonight, we went on a date and we literally took a calendar I don't I don't know how busy you are, but I, I mentioned some of the things we're into traveling, conferences, vacationing, child rearing, basketball practice, piano lessons, girlfriend nights, gym. <laughs> I mean, oh, my gosh, all of that stuff. The way that we learned early on how to find a balance and a rhythm is to not fly by the seat of your pants. I I would categorically uh, just try to exhort you guys. I'm, I'm talking about meal planning, sitting down on Sunday night. What are we eating this week? When are we eating? What's the schedule? What kind of opportunities do we have? Um, I mean, Morgan, we, I mean, I wish we had it. We we have small calendars in, in November of 2021. We had big calendars, small calendars. <laughs> we mapped out all of this year, my travel <laughs> schedule, vacations. Uh, we booked anniversary trip. I mean, we, we, so, so again, in the hustle and the bustle of life, it's right there in front of you. And so when you're texting, uh, when, when you're, you know, you're at work, it's, it's not this, I just don't think that you can be successful and you can be productive without a plan in place. Now, always opportunity for spontaneous things, but I remember those days, you know, when we, we were just married and you don't have kids, you don't have whatever, but gosh, we strongly encourage you in terms of communication You've got to have a family planner schedule. Uh, you know, fights arise so much, right? Like, well, you didn't tell me you committed to do this or you didn't tell me. And again, if you've got a centralized way that you can communicate and again, do it ahead of time, uh, you know, communicate your expectations. How much does it cost? What kind of time is it going to take? Those will save you so many fights. Honey, what do you think? Yeah, I think that that's really good. For the most part, it's just, a lot of times 
when you're in a marriage that you guys both want the best for one another, a lot of times the fights arise because it's unmet expectations or things that aren't said and communicated in the right tone. And instead it's like you expected them to read your mind and then they didn't. And so you're like, why didn't you do this? And so I think the more that you can prepare and plan, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Have you ever heard that quote? I think we kind of live by that. And then our calendar is always changing too, right? Like Jeremiah will have a speaking engagement that comes up or a kids have a birthday party or something that we have to fill in there. But then each time that comes up, it goes back to communicating that and saying, is this a priority? Can this fit into our schedule? Do we want to make this happen? And then going from there. Yeah. I mean, I'm serious. Like if you don't think I'm serious, I, I literally, I carry this, this, calendar around everywhere with me every day and it's not because i'm a control freak but again you know men are notorious for doing this when someone asks me if i'm available can i do something can i come preach can i have lunch i'm always going right here based off of what we have already talked about and that's how i'm going to answer them I'm just telling you, you, you would be shocked. It doesn't matter how, how long they've been married. You know, we, we know couples have been married 20, 30 years. It's still, they, they don't know what's going on. And, you know, if you've got kids, obviously all of that stuff, it spills over into them and it, it creates a chaotic environment for them that we don't think is healthy at all. So yes, we're literally saying on some of your date nights, Get your calendars, get your planners, uh, bring some rhythm, some balance to your life. Um, it'll be such a blessing. Um, what else? I saw someone said family dinner, and I think that is so important. And we've found that out when you live a fast paced life and that's not a norm. You have to schedule that in. And that's such a beautiful time for us. Um, you know, we're going to talk about parenting later, but some beautiful organic conversations can come up about the Lord or we can share our testimony or we've heard our kids tell stories about when the Lord has encountered them. So I think there's a powerful thing when you can gather around the family dinner table and planning those out. So that has become a priority. It always has been a priority, but this year we're just like, we're going to do it a few times a week, right? It, aside from all the busyness and getting that on the calendar is super important with your families, whether it's your spouse. I think you can get into the norm of life and go eat by in front of the TV or your kids are doing homework or everybody is here, there, everywhere. But I think gathering together is such an important thing. Yeah. And I mean, I, and again, I like, we totally get that. Like it's exhilarating for some people not to know, like, what's happening or where are we going or like we'll just talk about it after we get off work um, but again our our personal experience counseling couples working with them being around them is the whole fly by the seat of your pants method and again i'm talking about everything from dinner to bedtime to all of those things it can just lead to some really unstable habits and practices within the home that ends up hindering a lot of the things that you want to do. So um, Jeremiah and Morgan Johnson, big planners. Um, <laughs> we you like know, a schedule. <laughs> it, 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 it helps us to be productive. It helps us to thrive. It helps us to communicate. Um, and, it, and, you know, and again, it's so important to honor one another. Like, you know, if, if Morgan says to me, and again, this is just us like, Hey, buddy, I've got a, a, you know, a retreat for my business uh, and you're the one who travels and preaches like this weekend right here. You're not traveling and preaching because I've got something that I need to do. And so, again, because we literally said we've already planned 2022 and 2021, there's not a fight. There's not a disagreement. It didn't come up spontaneously. We've already talked about it. So it's just it's just so important. All right. I know some of you are commenting. Um, we want to hear from you. I know we're just sort of talking to a screen. Um, we've talked about finances. We've talked about communication. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Questions, comments, concerns. 
all of those kinds of things. So we're going to move into the next topic of parenting. Dun, 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 dun. But if uh, if you've got questions on communication, you've got questions on finances, how the, how does that work? Um, we're just going to continue to share our hearts and uh, and hope that it helps. So if you've got a question, comment, concern, uh, you can go ahead and, and write it in the comment section. All right. Um, some questions on kids. We'll talk about that next. Um, all right. Somebody's enjoying it. Ryan says he's encouraging. It's encouraging. I'm enjoying this. <laughs> good, man. Good. We're glad. Awesome. All right. Talk about kids. Yeah, I figured people are probably waiting for this. <laughs> yeah. So how do you adjust to the unpredictable with your guys? I saw. And again, it, you know, to most people's surprise, it's unpredictably predictable. Um, and again, because we plan and because we schedule and because we communicate, again, any 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 anything that is outside of what we've already planned ha has to get measured, um, you know, on what we've already talked about. So and that's really what I'm saying. If you if you just watch us online, you'll you would think that it's the mo it's the most erratic. I'm in California. I'm in, you know, Morgan's doing her business. We're on vacation and people are like, what in the, like, how do you do this? And again, what we're saying is the secret to all of this is the calendar planning to us. We're not falling apart. We're not on the verge of divorce. We're not unhealthy because of the calendar planning. That's the foundation which allows us to live the lifestyle that we live. And I think you have to follow grace. I think a lot of times we go back to like when Jeremiah gets an invitation and some of, you know, now he has friends and there's different people that he travels with more often. We go back to like, okay, but is this a God thing? You know, like there are a lot of good things that he can pass up, but does God want him? Is there an assignment there for him? And if the answer is yes, then it's like, of course, like we're going to make it work. And we try to follow grace. If grace lifts, both of us are like, whoa, 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 we need to regroup, go back, figure out this isn't working. There's stress. Or if we feel like we get into a stressful situation, then we go back to that. So I think it is important to not, you know, uh, compare your life to our life because there's a grace on our life that might not be on yours. So you have to go back to the Lord and your spouse and figure out what works for your family. I think for me, pretty laid back, um, you know, and me and the kids handle the house well while he's gone. And then when he's here, he steps up in a big way. And so it works for us in a healthy way because we're planning, because we're communicating, because we're taking it to the Lord. And if we feel like grace or peace has shifted, we go back and we figure out, okay, what can we change, you know, or what can we do differently? What do we need to take out? What's not a priority? And we kind of list things in that order. What's the most important? What's God saying right now? And we'll go with that. Yeah. And, and honestly, I mean, I'm just, I feel like sort of prompted. I mean, guys, especially if you're married, I mean, you, you've got to, you've got to be honest. Like if, if you're, you know, I tell people there's, there's unrealistic expectations and then there are realistic expectations. So everybody has hopes, dreams, desires. Um, we go on an anniversary trip every single year. It, it's a, it is a real ex, a realistic expectation that we have. I'm taking her on a trip. It's it's not a staycation. It's not a we're spending money and we're going to sow into our marriage. But you 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 know you you could be sitting like wow my my husband never takes me on an end. Well, my 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 first question would be. Are you being vocal about that? A lot of a lot of people they they live with disappointment, they live with discouragement, but they never really voice. They never brave the fear of, of uh, being rejected, of being told no, all of those kinds of things. So I really just just want to encourage you. Um, in this regard, you've got to be honest. You've got to, you know, you've got like, this is important to me. This is not important to me. All of those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Any yeah. questions you want to answer? 
there's well there's a question and answer section everybody's saying okay so there's a question and answer yeah we're new to this yeah there's (laughs) there's a ton of them um yeah gosh um let's just take maybe one or two um any ones that you're seeing that Oh, that's a kid one. Yeah, we're we're getting lots of kid questions. We're getting ready to jump in there. Will you pray and consider doing a marriage graph? Oh my gosh! Listen, we're we. That's like the number one question. Um, we would love to do a marriage conference. We'd actually love to do a retreat. Um, we really want to pick a city in the United States, kind of get a hotel block, and then whoever wants to come. Um, we can do hands-on, you know, training and I, I'd, I'd love to prophesy over everybody and encourage them, but, um, I'm really terrified of public speaking and and she's so good at it. She got a, she got better speaking grades in college than I did. Um, yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do you make it work with dates? Well, I think that's a good one. There's a couple different, so we're getting into the kids thing, but what, what's just, We'll start talking about kids and parenting and then just keep the questions coming. Yeah. So if you don't like to leave kids with anybody, I think community is really important, though. So making sure you find community. I know when we moved to North Carolina, that deficit was there. We were like, who do we leave our kids with? We weren't by family and our church family was like our family. It was very hard to leave at that point. But date nights were important. And at this point, I was wanting to travel with him and both of our travel schedules were picking up. Um, and so I think it is really important and I prayed and the Lord totally showed up and we met an amazing girl who has now got married and moved away, <laughs> but we do always pray and ask the Lord to bring the right person along. So first I would do that and really try to get into community. But if you don't have the finances or you don't have someone there and that's a real thing, cause I think you should prioritize that. That is important. Then put the kids to bed out of bedtime put on a movie, talk, maybe do a candlelight dinner, but put them to bed and prioritize that time where it's just you two and it's different than the norm and do like an in-house date night and make a special priority for your marriage at that point. Yeah. And I mean, even some of these questions, like how, how do you make personal time? I mean, again, depending on how busy you are, I mean, we're, we're like, most people look at our life and are like, you're the busiest people we've ever met. You've got to schedule it. You've got to plan it. I mean, I, I just, I don't know how people hear that, but like you, it's like, well, I've got kids. Well, if quiet time with God is important to you, you need to wake up before your kids wake up, even if it's five in the morning and spend time with the Lord. So all of those kinds of things, um, you know, Morgan and I, I mean, we could start talking about parenting, but like, again, for us, we have a scheduled bedtime that our kids go to bed at the same time every night. Now, of course, you have vacation or church or different things, but a a consistent regular, they go to bed at the same time. Okay. We, we, you know, you brush your teeth, sing songs. We read Bible stories. We do all of that stuff. You get them in a routine that they're used to every night. You put them to bed. But why do we put them to bed? So that mom and dad have time with one another to communicate, to be with one another, to, to again, so into one another. We, we've not done the kids sleeping in the bed. We, we, we've not done it yet, but again, it's to protect our time together. So we believe healthy marriages are what sustain healthy families. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we believe that you are supposed to be raising your kids in a parent centered home not a child-centered home. So in other words, our kids do not dictate the schedule. They don't dictate what we're doing, where we're going. Mom and dad are who sets the schedule, the boundaries, the bedtimes, and it ensures 
that we as a married couple are communic all of those kinds of things. But but again, there's a reason why, you know, it's not just, oh, get in bed and, you know, we're tired and, you know, that stuff. It's it's systematic. There's a reason behind the why. So, honey, you're you're so good in this area. Why don't you talk talk a little bit about parenting and keep keep the questions coming? Yeah, I think it depends on the age of the child. We have the Jesus calling for kids. And so if you read the day, it's like five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And so if we have 30 minutes to an hour, then we're going to in-depth talk about it. We're going to ask questions. We're going to have some prayer time. But if we only have the five to 10 minutes, we only do the five to 10 minutes. And so it's something simple that we can get in there for the kids. We have kids from three to 10. Okay. So my kids are younger in age. And so that's kind of what we do daily with the kids. And then as far as me, um, I have like a devotion that I do for myself, but I am talking to the Lord daily. And I remember the Lord convicting me about doing my time separately and not with the kids because then they never saw me reading my Bible or they never saw me praying. And I think it's important that our kids know that we have that kind of lifestyle. And was it Suzanne Wesley had this apron and um, it touched me so much. He spoke an amazing word on a Mother's Day. I don't, did we even have Bella at that time? It was a long time ago. Maybe we had our two oldest or something. Um, I love preaching on Mother's Day. <laughs> he's being sarcastic. <laughs> but she would, every she would wear an apron all the time, I'm assuming. And when it was over her head, her kids knew not to bother her because that was her time with Jesus. But I think it's important to teach our kids that Jesus is the most important thing in our life. And when mom is talking to Jesus, we're not going to disturb her unless there's an emergency. So I try to do that. I'm folding laundry, like praying, speaking in tongues. My kids are like, mom, why are you praying? I'm like, because I like to pray all day. I think it's good for them to catch those things and um, see you living a lifestyle of prayer. Yeah. And, you know, it might shock some of you about this, but honestly, you know, I think that you just, you have to find the balance and you, you, I just you know, for as many kids that grow up in homes where there's no sense of God, you also have kids who have like religion shoved down their face. And a lot of the counseling that I've done over the years with married couples, to me, you have to be aware of like over spiritualizing or, or being sensational you know, it's like forcing a four-year-old, you know, to read the Bible for an hour or, you know, asking your eight-year-old to sit there and worship God for 45 minutes. I mean, I, I, I think a lot of that is over the top. Yes, our kids are having encounters and yes, all of that stuff. But it, it's kind of in the ebb and the flow of like what the Holy Spirit is doing. And so I just... You know, I don't, you know, I, you know, like our girls, you know, sometimes it's, it's at bedtime, you know, where they want to talk about Adam and Eve, or I'm currently going through, um, you know, the story of Joseph with Israel. I mean, some nights it's nothing. We're talking about football and other nights he's asking deep theological questions, but I'm not going to like force that on him. And so I would just also encourage um, parents, you know, to just kind of, you know, I know we, we want them to get it and we want them to be encouraged and all that stuff, but you, 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 you can be just as toxic forcing it on them um, as you can, you know, never talking about God. So I just, I'd encourage that. Yeah, I try to use like the same principles that you're using in parenting. So when we're at church, if I've asked them, you know, or told them to go to the bathroom and they're not going to go again until after worship or something, I hold that to my word, right? And so it's not like you're setting an unrealistic expectation. You know that they can do that. And so you're loving them through that. I'm talking to my kids about how other people are worshiping and other people are praying. So we're not going to be a disturbance, right? So that's why I'm asking them to be quiet. Quiet or so we do set boundaries when they're in church services for the sake of them learning and honor for the Lord and for those around them. 
And then we're giving them opportunities to experience the Lord for themselves. We do that both in church services and at home. So I like some of our funnest memories with the kids are turning on Eddie James worship and just dancing like crazy people. And you make it fun and interactive. And then they have times of encounters on their own because we can talk to them until we're blue in the face, but they have to have the encounter for themselves and they have to believe it for themselves. We can't make them do that. So we just train them the best we can. We lead them to water and then they themselves have to drink that. So I think that's really, really important. Um, and then they watch us. So much more is caught than we can teach them. So that doesn't mean we have to be perfect. None of us are perfect Christians, but they're going to watch us give to the poor. They're going to watch us worship and pray. They're going to watch us mess up and then have to ask for forgiveness, right? And walk out our own salvation and they're going to learn things from that. So you don't have to be perfect by any means and showing them what happens when we do make a mistake and how forgiving God is and all of those things. We have to be real because they can spot real. And when we're real working on ourselves, then they get to have that encounter and they're like, okay, mom and dad love Jesus with all their heart. They're normal people too. And they mess up, but they can go to God and he forgives them. And this is an awesome experience. We need to be joyful and show our kids that serving the Lord is such a joyful experience. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, again, because it's us, you know, when, when people follow us online, you know, they see, you know, Jeremiah is so intense and, you know, revival and fire and, you know, all of this stuff. And it's like, they don't see the home <laughs> life, uh, part of me or Morgan or the family, um, which again, you know, we've got a basketball game for our son tomorrow night. You know, our girls are in piano. I mean, you know, we're, we're, we're normal people in that sense. We're, we're really not trying to create this over spiritual, you know, yes, there's God and yes, there's encounters. Um, but there's just, there's just a lot of, of like, just, yeah, <laughs> being a family um that i think is just really important i'm just you know i'm 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 concerned about the extremes um in our culture today where again you have the totally godless and then you have the law religious that damages uh people as well and i i really do agree with morgan i mean so much more is caught than taught uh, I know with our daughter, Bella, you know, I, I talk with her a lot and she watches me give to the poor or so money to missions. And now when she gets money for doing certain things, you know, she right now is sewing every month into voice of the martyrs. And so literally like our 10 year old gets magazines in the mail every month reading about, I mean, horrible stories about people being martyred and their heads cut off. And, you know, she's getting encountered by the Lord, developing a heart for the persecuted church and a desire to give them money. But like that, I, I didn't, you know, it just, she watches me give to the poor, so into missions, talk to her about my heart. And then there's sort of a, a natural overflow in that 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 ends up being reciprocated so i definitely agree and you know it stinks because obviously you know you you gotta you gotta you know you gotta watch what you say and and what you do and all of those kinds of things so what else i mean yeah, i saw the question about the devotions jesus calling for kids is our favorite right now but storybook bible was another great one as well. Um, and then as a parent, I think it's super important. Like I am not the best reader. My goal in 2022 is to read a whole lot more than I do. But one of my absolute favorite books that I've read more than one time is Shepherding a Child's Heart. I think as Jeremiah was talking, you have two sides of the spectrum and things like that. And I remember the Lord talking to me, even like Bella Grace has always been a really naturally like, um, she would obey super easily. She was a super strong willed. She's pretty easy child. But I remember the Lord speaking to me and being like, you don't want to raise little Pharisees, like doing the right thing, right? And for everybody to see, and you have to get to their heart. And I think shepherding a child's heart is one of uh, the best books out there for that. 
Um, and then another tool that I use that I wanted to mention is a chart called Wise Words for Moms. It comes from a book, um, Ginger Hubbard wrote it, and she wrote a book called Don't Make Me Count to Three. I also liked that one. And the chart is taking scriptures. So it talks about what's the core issue. Did that child just lie? Did they take a toy? What was their issue? So that's on the left. And then it asks probing questions that you can ask the child. So you're getting to the core issue of their heart. And then it has scriptures on the side. So it's basically all out there for you because I'm a firm believer in getting advice and listening to podcasts and reading all the books. But ultimately, our instructions are in the Bible and the Holy Spirit is the best teacher. And he knows each of your children individually. He knows you individually. And so praying and asking the Lord what they can do or what you should be doing for them is the most important thing that you can be doing. So I strongly encourage you to get some resources like that, the couple that I mentioned, and really pray and ask the Lord what's best for your kids. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of questions on here, you know, about backlash and all of that stuff. And again, I, I just, I want to encourage parents, you know, we're, you know, the, you know, Okay, let, let me just put this. No, nowhere in the Bible does it say to raise children. Nowhere in the Bible does it say to raise children. Everywhere in the Bible, it says to train children. So biblical parenting is not letting kids pick and choose and, and do whatever that they want. Again, pick and choose. I'm not talking about, you know, little things, but I'm, I'm talking about biblical training is we are setting the boundaries we are setting what's going to happen and what's not going to happen and we're we're not doing like well if i don't let my kids watch tv they're going to they're going to throw a fit you're being manipulated by your child and you have to refuse to be manipulated well they're going to act out in public well again that's a private issue. Children act out in public because they haven't been trained in the home. And so if you're having outbursts and child, you know, child issues and stuff, you've got to go back to the home. And again, there are some battles that you can't lose. Uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that we are here to break a child's will. We're not here to break their spirit you can cross that line. Um, but biblical parenting, it, it, this is, we're training them. We're instructing them. We're loving them. We're correcting them. Um, we're not just raising them like, okay, Johnny, whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, and I'll just kind of follow you along and ha, 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 you're cute. You're funny. That That's not biblical training. And again, counseling, talking, that's just the way a lot of people do it. And again, they fear the conflict. Uh, they fear the outbursts. And I would just encourage you, refuse to be manipulated and controlled by your children. Um, you, they will thank you in the years ahead uh, for laying down boundaries and laying down um, healthy, healthy things. And I think it's good to be proactive versus reactive. And we even had a dog trainer here last night because we just got a puppy and I'm convinced that we're going to train him well. And as she was here, I felt like, man, this is a lot like kids, right? I'm training my toddler just like I have to now train this puppy. But doing exercises with them before you're in the moment is super important. So teaching them to obey before you don't want them to touch the stove is a great idea. And making it fun for games. If you're going to obey mommy's voice, let's try it. Here, do you want to try it? Here, take this and put it by the sink. Or, you know, just doing practical training sessions with your kids really will go a long way um, if you have younger kids. Somebody was asking about the chart that you mentioned. Wise words for moms. And I think Ginger Hubbard, I'm pretty sure, wrote it. Awesome. All right, y'all. We're going to start landing the plane. Um, we we're going to go into a couple of more questions. Again, I'm going to post in the comments section if you joined us late or if you've been here the whole time. I'll just say one more time so I'm not beating a dead horse. Morgan and I, if you can't tell, we've had a crazy burden for marriages and families. 
even if you're single, maybe you're divorced, believing God uh, for a, a new season. Um, we went into our studio. Morgan did sessions speaking directly to moms and wives. I did sessions speaking directly uh, to husbands and fathers. Again, you're talking Genesis 2 and 3, leave and cleave, in-laws, fights. What does it mean to be led by the Holy Spirit uh, as, as a couple? We talked parenting. We had conversations. Um, we're just trying to do the best that we can tonight just to introduce ourselves, let you get used to us. But if you really want to dive deeper into this subject, we really want to encourage you. Um, just check out the link that I'm posting. There's no pressure at all. I'm going to broadcast it to the room now, but we just want to offer that as a way to just assist you. Um, it's a video courses, um, just interactive, just to hope to be a blessing to you. So um, we're going to take a couple more questions. Um, how do you feel about spanking in relation to discipline? Again, um, some of you, you know, might log out right now. Uh, we believe in spanking. Uh, we believe that the Bible is clear on that. Um, we don't believe in abuse. And again, it's just one of those things where, you know, you feel like you have to qualify the statement because, you know, there's so extremes. But yes, we believe in spanking. Uh, we don't believe in doing it angry. Uh, we don't believe that that kids sh you should associate uh, discipline with anger. Uh, we, we discipline our kids because we love them and uh, we provide appropriate uh, consequences for them. Uh, we train them in righteousness um, and, and mom and dad shouldn't have to spank you if we're training you right. So, um, you know, but obviously there are times the Bible foolishness is bound up in the heart of children, but the rod will drive it out. Uh, and again, no beatings, no black and blue, no yelling, screaming, throwing them around. <laughs> that that's totally remove that from your from your your frame of reference. But yeah, uh, if they cross the line, if they've been warned, there are consequences for actions, and uh, you know we do that because we love them. So um, you know we're we're grateful. Uh, we were really coached and mentored well by a couple early on in our marriage um, that had seven kids um, that strongly encouraged us in these ways. And um, it's paid off and been a, been a great blessing. And I can remember two times specifically, because obviously I don't think anybody enjoys spanking their kids. So you never want to, but you always know that you're doing it because the Bible says so and doing it never out of anger. We always use a spanking spoon. Um, but I remember two different times, like pushing it off, pushing it off, pushing it off. And then finally giving that child a spanking and watching her countenance change. And later, a day later, she said, mom, you know, I think I really needed that spanking. It helped me a lot. So even I've seen fruit of doing it the right way and watching them change their ways. So I don't know why the Bible connects that, but you know, spare the rod, rod spoil the child. I think the Bible says it where to do it. Yeah. And again, it's all in love. You know, our culture, they, they, they try to separate discipline from love. And again, it's not loving to not discipline your kids. It is loving to discipline your kids. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to say that to yourself a couple of times mm -hmm. just to get it. But, um, you know, it, it's a blessing. All right. Me and my wife, are both in our 20s with six kids. Come on, brother, under 10. So any wow. words of wisdom on how we can continue to develop into all God has for us while balancing life and, and, and parenting? Awesome. Man, God bless you. You know, I, I tell people God was so wise. You know, he our destiny is to be conformed into his image and likeness. And the two primary ways he's chosen to conform us into his likeness and image is marriage. And if that's not working, you're going to have some kids and you're going to learn. So, Shane, I've got to believe that you are in some serious character for formation. And I, again, my, you know, you asked about the balance, man. My, my heart for you guys 
would be a lot of a lot of a lot of balance, a lot of spiritual things and a lot of not spiritual things, you know, a lot of fun and hanging out and all of those things and a lot of God stuff. Um, I just hope that God would give you guys grace on your journey uh, as a marriage and a family um, just to follow the Holy Spirit and to create an environment uh, that feels safe. But uh, there's liberty um, to do to do what God's called you guys to do. So um, find your rhythm. Uh, all of those things. He said, you ain't lying. Yeah, man. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I think marriage, you know, you lay down your own life there and then when you have kids you're like okay i really am laying down everything you don't eat dinner when you want you got you know you're serving these little kids and i can't imagine 10 we have four so yeah and i just feel like you know kids feel safest when they know the boundaries they know what to expect you know yeah. when they know what to expect it's just like we fear you can't do this you can't do oh they're gonna be miserable oh they're gonna I, I encourage you to categorically reject all of that. Um, when they know what they can expect, when they know what the boundaries are, they can thrive and you can thrive with them. Um, it can be such such a blessing. All right, I'll take, let's do one more question. I know it's really running late. Um, While you look for the question, I saw somebody, when your kids ask you like why they can't do things or they feel like they're missing out. We have beautiful conversations that come from that. So, you know, we don't particularly like go and celebrate Halloween. So then we talk to them kind of about our convictions. Cause I think that's a conviction based thing. And then we ask them what they feel like they're missing out on. Oh, candy. Okay. You get candy all the time. Or, <laughs> you know, we talk to them about specific things and where our convictions lie. Same thing with TV shows. All my friends can watch this. Well, this is what we really don't like about it. And this is why we we're not allowing you to do that. So it goes to a, this is our conviction. This is why you're not allowed to do it. And it opens up beautiful conversations of your faith with your kids as you're setting those boundaries. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. Gosh, my, I just, you know, my, my, my heart is so, is so in this arena. Um, I just think this, a lot of people in this generation, it's just extremism. It, it, it literally is a lot of worldliness and there's no God. And then on the other side, man, it's just like parents and, marriages it's just this hyper spiritual shove down your face and both are just so toxic and i just i just pray for those watching tonight that the lord would would help you in your marriage and family i mean and, you know and some of you are single right and and like you know or some of you are married to an unbelieving spouse or listen just do the best that you can you know you you can't be too hard on yourself you know ultimately your spouse needs an encounter with God. Ultimately, your kids need an encounter with God. Uh, I just, I just re really, really encourage you, don't be too hard on yourself. You know, do what you can to position your kids or your mm -hmm. spouse for an encounter. But there's only so much that you can do. You know, if you're that mom and, you know, the, you know, you know, your ex-husband is, you know, crazy what i mean all you can do is love on them in your home point them to the truth you know have boundaries when they're with you and you know you 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 they they'll know when they get older and they grow up hey thank god for mom she might have felt you know she was to this or to that or hey thank god for mom she wasn't shoving jesus down my throat 24 7. she's just willing to go out in the yard and kick the ball and have some fun and all of those kinds of things. I mean, we're just, you know, whatever that you do, go hard. In other words, like when you're, when you're doing, you're, you're in it with God, go hard. But when you're on vacation, go hard, have fun. Don't, don't sow all this money into God's stuff and then not have any money for vacation. You, you've got to find balance there. So just hope that some of that stuff, you want to say anything in closing? I just think it's so good. I think they want real people who love Jesus. And you. so the testimony and the light that's in your life will shine as you love them. But loving them doesn't mean overcompensating because dad lets them do whatever they want or vice versa. You have to love them in truth of God's word, have fun with them and show them who Jesus is through your lifestyle and through the boundaries you set for them. Awesome. Awesome. 
All right, y'all. Well, I think we're going to finish up again. Sorry for getting late to the call. We talked to a screen that was <laughs> like blank 15. for 15 <laughs> minutes. We apologize. Thanks for joining us, taking time out of your night. Again, you'll get an email tonight. It'll let you know about the media project that we're launching. Uh, we hope that, you know, just the time that we spent, we worked on, try to work on some specific areas in marriage and family could be a blessing to you. But if not, uh, I want to encourage you to follow us online, Facebook, Instagram. Again, we've kind of have that business, family, travel, church planning, all of that kind of stuff that we're involved in. And we hope some of the tips and keys that we shared tonight would be a blessing to you. So, honey, can you close us in prayer? Sure. Lord, we just thank you so much for who you are. God, we thank you for your wisdom and your Holy Spirit that is there to lead us and guide us. God, I just pray for everybody on this call and anybody who's going to watch it. God, I pray that you give them wisdom. Lord, and I just pray for grace and peace. God, I just even pray for a boldness and a confidence to lead their family in the way that it should go. God, that they would use you and be equally yoked with you as they walk closely with you and um, steward their families well. Thank you, Lord, that you are our greatest teacher. We bless you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hey, God bless you guys. Thanks for joining us. And uh, look for the email in your email. And uh, we will see you guys online at a conference, a meeting, on vacation. We were we were on a date tonight and a, a woman that we'd never met before said, Hey, I know you. <laughs> and uh, if you ever see us in public or, or want to come introduce up, yourself, I promise we're, <laughs> we're pretty, and we might look scary. I might look scary on a stage, but I'm, I'm a pretty, I think I'm a pretty relatable guy. So yes. God bless you guys. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Hi, it's Morgan and Jeremiah. We are really excited about the launch of a brand new e-course called The Family Altar. Hey, we are so excited. If you're on the verge of divorce, maybe you like want to knock your head against the wall because your kids are giving you problems. Maybe you're just like fighting about finances or you know what? I know there are people out there. Things are okay, but you know they can be better. We want to encourage you to, to an in-depth, real, raw conversation, teaching from Morgan. I'm going to get after it as well. Think about it. Pray about it. Join us right now on the launch of this new e-course, The Family Altar.